Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Joe Simpson. I just wanted to come this morning and talk about microphones once again. I wanted to talk about three different microphones. They're all going to be what they call dynamic microphones. And I wanted to show the differences between these three and help you hopefully make a choice that would be right for you. So without further ado, let's talk about microphones in general. What I'm going to be dealing with today is dynamic microphones. Dynamic microphones, unlike condenser microphones, require a little bit closer proximity to the microphone. You'll see them on sound stages where people sing in concerts and things, and they'll put their mouths right up on it because you can get right up on these microphones and they sound good. I like the sound of my voice through a dynamic microphone, especially when going through something like the Rodecaster Pro. I think it sounds the best. It refuses the most noise from my room. My rooms are not perfect. So it seems to be the best choice for me, um, although you will see the microphone in screen and it's going to kind of kill, you know, the discreetness of doing the audio. But in this particular case, since I'm just doing a talking head video, most people don't really care about what the scene looks like as much as what I'm saying. But if you're doing a scene, you might need some type of dynamic microphone or a shotgun microphone that is further away that can record the audio uh, still in a very strong pattern, but not have to be in the screen or as close to the subject. So um, let's not beat up all the different angles and aspects of microphones, because hopefully you're here because you've already made a decision to buy a dynamic microphone. You just don't know which one to get. So the three I'm going to talk about today are going to be what I would consider budget. I'm going to have more of the $100 high-end budget, which is not high-end in microphone world, but for me, it was. I have about a $50, $60 mid-range budget, and I have one that I picked up for around 10 bucks. So I wanted to show you the different sounds of these microphones and uh, give you some impressions of, of what I think about them and why I think you should buy one over the other. The microphone you're hearing right now is probably my favorite of all three. It's the SM58. And without much surprise, it's probably the most expensive. It's $100. But if you go on eBay, since these microphones are so bulletproof and tough, you can find them used in very good shape for around 50 bucks. So I bought this one on eBay for around $58. Seemed to be a good deal. I got it to the house and it works fine. The SM58 has a pretty neutral uh, pickup pattern, but it does accentuate and soften the tones of the voice and make everything sound pretty natural. And it's easy to get some uh, good lower end out of your voice in this microphone too. So I really like it. It does not have a USB connection. So it is only XLR and that's the three pin type of connection point. And that's going to be the connection that most professionals use when they're doing audio. Um, if you need something to go directly into the computer, I might have a solution for you here in just a second. So this is the SM58. Let's move on to the next microphone. Now this microphone that you're hearing is called the Samson R21. And I can show you this microphone up close because I've got three of them. I bought this package because I thought I would be doing some uh, podcasting potentially at like a tabletop. So I thought I want to have at least three decent dynamic mics to offer up other people talking so we can have something to listen to that sounds decent. The sound characteristics, I would say, of the Samson is a little bit more high-end and top-end. Um, I'm not as crazy about the, the resolution and the way the top-end sounds on this microphone, but I don't think it sounds bad. And I got that kit off of eBay once again. That was a $25 three-microphone kit used but in new shape. That comes up to about 7 or 8 bucks per microphone. If you were to look for this online brand new in a single microphone form, you'd be looking at probably around 12 to 15 bucks, maybe somewhere around that area. So I think it's a good option for a budget, um, but it does not do well with plosives. And let me show you what I mean. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Plosives are those puh and tuh sounds that come through a microphone that can kind of ruin a person's experience when you're talking and it's happening a lot. So you have to be careful. And what you do is you set it at 45 degrees, set the microphone at 45 degrees and talk past the microphone and that helps immensely. And then also you can put on these windscreens. But for this test today, I'm not going to do that because I'd have to be taking it on and off and it's already ripped. So I want to just save it. Um, anyway, this is the Samson R21. Sounds decent. Not the best in the world. But if in a pinch and you need an extra microphone, this would be a good one. If you're just starting out and you barely have any money at all, it's not a bad option. Although I do think the Behringer choices, um, the 1800 and the 8500 for a few more dollars, maybe four or five more dollars each, um, might be a better choice. But these were a three-pack. I liked the case. I wanted the package. So 
I went with it. Um, so let's move on to another microphone that I really like a lot that I think could be in the sweet spot. This is the Samson Q2U. Now, this is a unique microphone among the others because it has not only um, the XLR inputs or outputs for the professional style hookup, it has, in addition, a USB hookup. You can go on the road with very little equipment. And with this microphone, plug the Samson Q2U directly into your computer and get some of the great sound that you like from this microphone. This microphone has some of the similar characteristics and sounds that I thought were in the SM58 Shure, which is my favorite microphone. You have a headphone jack at the bottom of this microphone too, so you can monitor your sound, plug into a computer, and do your own sound mixing within the computer on the fly, so that makes it very versatile. There's very specific uses for each of the mics that I have. I have the Shure SM58, which is pretty much gonna be locked and loaded on my desktop at all times. I'm going to have the R21 Samsons for, hey, when I have extra people coming to chit chat, I can plug them into my Rodecaster Pro and mix it all down. I have the Q2U, which is my versatile, get it all done, Swiss Army knife of microphones, which has great sound and pickup. It's got a headphone jack at the bottom of this mic and also USB connectivity. The other nice thing about the Samson Q2U is it's only $59 on B&H Photo. You can get these things all over the place. They come with some nice accessories, and it won't break the bank. So I think the Q2U falls in that sweet spot. Um, but if you're looking for ultimate sound quality, I really prefer the SM58. So let's do a quick sound test of all three microphones. You can hear them one more time. I'm going to read something from the Samson R21 literature um, to give you a reading sample and sound quality sample of these microphones. The first mic up is the Samson Q2U. Thank you for purchasing Samson R21 Dynamic Microphone. The R21 Dynamic Microphone brings a high level of accuracy and audio performance to vocal miking applications. So there you have it. That's the Q2U. Let's move to the R21. Thank you for purchasing the Samson R21 Dynamic Microphone. The R21 Dynamic Microphone brings a high level of accuracy and audio performance to vocal miking applications. Last up is the Shure SM58. Thank you for purchasing the Samson R21 Dynamic Microphone. The R21 Dynamic Microphone brings a high level of accuracy and audio performance to vocal miking applications. So there you have it. You have a very, very inexpensive mic. You have a medium priced $60 microphone and you have a higher end priced $100 microphone, which you can find on eBay for around 50 or 60 bucks. So, I would say don't be too scared to buy these microphones used. Oh, sorry. They are kind of bulletproof in the sense that they can take a drop or a hit or a knock. Um, not all are created equal, um, but these all have metal bodies. These all have screen mesh covers, and they all do pretty well with vocal range. And with a little bit of wind filtering and applications, you can make them all sound great. So get out there, grab yourself a mic that sounds best with your voice, start podcasting or using it to do your audio recordings and uh, see what you can create, man. Um, I just wanted to share this because when I first started looking for microphones, sometimes I would see comparisons of something that was kind of low end to something that was super high end, and it kind of scared me thinking I should only buy expensive things. Um, but after watching enough reviews, I've realized that in this $20, $30, 40 $50 price range, you can really get some nice quality equipment. The nice thing is when they're not expensive, you can replace them easily too. You guys have a good one. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.